Being a desktop developer, I've always been spoiled with Visual Studio and creating new projects. I simply say file, new project, pick my project type, hit OK, and boom, I'm ready to rock and roll. Unfortunately, this is not the case with an Angular application. And this is probably the biggest barrier to entry for desktop devs trying to use Angular. How in the heck do we create a new project? Well, in this video, not only am I gonna show you how to create a new Angular application in Visual Studio Code, but I'm gonna compare the file structure of an Angular app to that of a WPF application, and we can see where the similarities exist and where they don't exist. So let's go ahead and get started. Roll the intro. If you're a desktop developer, creating new projects inside of Visual Studio is pretty straightforward. You would say file, new project, find the project type you want, in this case, the WPF application, give it a name and hit OK. The project is instantly created for you. You can see your solution, your project, and all the files that are included in that project. However, since you're going into the Angular world, you want to create a new project inside Visual Studio Code. So as a desktop guy, your first instinct is to go file new project. However, there is no new project option here, and that's because Visual Studio Code is not project-based, it's file-based. So in order to create a new Angular application, we're going to hop into the command prompt, and we're gonna use the Angular CLI to say ng new demo app. Demo app is the name of our application. We're gonna be prompted for, would we like to add Angular routing? At this time, no, but we will cover this in a later video. Next, what kind of style sheet would you like to use? Well, we're gonna stick with the basic CSS for now. It takes a few minutes, but eventually the process will complete and your new application will be created on disk. So now what we wanna do is we don't wanna change directories to your demo app folder that was just created. Once you're in this demo app, we're gonna open it with code by typing code space period. This is gonna launch a new instance of Visual Studio Code that contains your Angular application. Now this is the part that is probably the most overwhelming to desktop developers trying to learn Angular, the folder structure. Now, the source folders where you'll be doing most of your work. So let's expand that and you'll see there are a number of files that just slap you right in the face, right? I mean, this, this is a lot. Coming from the desktop, come from WPF and you look at this and you just wanna vomit a little bit in your mouth because it's just so overwhelming. So let's go ahead and take a look at each of these files and see how they relate to a WPF application. Now, the best way to do that is to compare each project side by side. On the left, we have our WPF app. On the right, we have our Angular app. Now, it's important to keep in mind that an Angular application is a single page application, SPA, meaning there is only one page in the entire app and that is your index.html. Now, the index.html, I like to think of as your app.xaml. The reason is the HTML is global, if you will, okay? So anything you put in this file will show up on every single page in every view in your app. It also has a section in the body called app root. I like to think of this as the startup URI. So let's go ahead and open up our app.xaml and we can see that the app.xaml is where we specify the startup URI or the first page that we wanna show when the app launches. That is very similar to what the index.html is doing here with the app root. When we navigate to the index.html, we are specifying we want the app root to be the first page that shows when the app is launched. Now, what happens technically is when you navigate to the index.html, the main.ts file, this JavaScript file invokes, which loads the app module. An Angular application is made up of modules and components. We'll talk more about this in later videos, but just know that by default, you'll get a root module and a root component. And those are gonna be located under the app folder. So when the main TS file invokes, we're gonna bootstrap the app module, which is in the app folder. Here's the app module.ts. And we can see that the app module then bootstraps its own app component. Now the app component is here, and we can see that the selector is set to app root. Like I said, we'll talk more about components in the future, but for now, just know that the app root is saying, hey, I want this HTML file. As you can see, the, the template URL is the app.component.html. I want the content of this HTML file, app.component.html, to represent the app root, which is the first page that launches when we show this application or when we navigate to this web app. 
So I really like to think of the index.html as the at.xaml. And I like to think of the main.ts as the at.xaml.cs, almost like the code behind. It's, it's the part that does the actual work. It also means that this at.component.html, which is the default component or the default view that's shown when the application runs, is very similar to the default main window that is created for you by WPF that's shown when you run the WPF app. So I, I kind of like to think of those as the same as well. So you can kind of start making this mapping of how this works. Now let's start from the bottom here. We have a packages.config. Now in WPF, we know that packages.config is where all the definition for our dependencies, our NuGet packages are defined. Well, in this case, in an Angular application, we have a package.json. This is very similar to the package.config in which this file contains the dependencies that your application requires to run. But not only that, it requires the dependencies that are required to develop the application. And it also contains a section for scripts that you can run in the console when you're testing or starting or building the application. And we'll talk about that later. Now let's take a look at our references folder. So in WPF, we have a references node in our solution here, and it shows all the references that are added to this project. In an Angular application, that's actually gonna be the nodes module. Now, in the case of Angular, when you scroll through all these nodes, you're gonna freak out because there are thousands of them. I mean, thousands and thousands of files. So coming from the desktop, this is gonna blow your mind because we are not used to having such a massive dependency tree. I mean, in WPF, you, you only add what is barely minimally necessary to run the app. And that's having full access to the entire operating system of the machine. Uh, but yeah, you're coming to Angular, be prepared to just be overwhelmed with node modules. Now, the way these are populated is by using NPM. So anytime you add an NPM package, that module will be added here. Unfortunately, that's about where the similarities end and Angular file structure takes over. So let's quickly cover a lot of the other files just so you kind of know what they do, uh, but they're not really important at this point in our series. First, let's start with the E to E. This folder stands for end to end testing. Now, this is not unit testing. This is more like integration testing, or you're, you're testing a full process, like a login process or something like that. So I already mentioned the source folder. This is where you're gonna be doing most of your work. The app folders where all the code for your application is going to exist. You know, just where your modules are gonna exist, where your components are gonna exist. Then you have an assets folder. This is where your images or other assets that are gonna be copied over as is will exist. Then you have an environments folder. This folder is for your build environment. Next, you have the favicon. Uh, this is the little icon that appears in the browser when you're at your site. The karma.config, this file is for testing. This is unit testing here. We talked about the main TS. Uh, the style sheet, you can think of this as a global resource dictionary. This would be a resource dictionary that is made available to your entire WPF application, which you would define in your at.xaml. That's what the styles.css is. You have tsconfig files, which are for compiling uh, TypeScript code files and other test specifications. You have an editor.config file. This is for setting up your editor. Of course, we know a git ignore, which is, you know, we tell git what files to ignore when we check in. We have the angular.json file. Now this file is used to configure the uh, CLI and it configures how the CLI generates code and works for uh, works with files in your application. So for example, we can see that the prefix is set to app. We also scroll down a little bit. We can see in our assets, this is where we're listing a collection of assets that we're including in our application. So we have our assets folder included in here. So if you were to add another folder that contained other assets, you would just insert that here. Same thing for styles, the styles element. This is going to represent all the globally available styles that you want to make available to your application. In this case, we only have the one styles.css. Uh, there's tons and tons of options in here. Uh, you should go through these and check them out one by one. We're not gonna cover them now, maybe in a later video. And then lastly, we have a TS lint file, a linter that checks code against code style rules and lets you know if any of the rules are broken for your TypeScript. 
It's kind of like style cop in Visual Studio, right? You have these rules, these language rules that if you break, you'll get a little squigglies or warnings and uh, things like that. And lastly, how do we run the application? Well, if you're a desktop developer, you're used to being in Visual Studio and hitting F5. And then Visual Studio compiles the application and poof, the app just starts running and there's the main window of your WPF application. However, that is not the case in Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code does not have an F5. So I'm gonna go ahead and close our Visual Studio because we're done in there. What I wanna do is I want to open the terminal that's built into Visual Studio Code. In order to do that, we will go to Terminal, New Terminal, or Control Shift Backtick. As you can see, the terminal has opened up underneath the code window here. In order to run your Angular application, simply type ng serve. This is going to spin up your development server and then launch your application into the local host port 4200, as you can see right here. So as soon as this is done building, we will click on this link to open up our website in the browser. So everything's done compiling, scroll up a little bit. And as we see, here is our application. Welcome, welcome to demo app. Here are some links. So if we look back at our app.component.html, we will see welcome to title. Here are the links. This is the HTML that we are seeing on screen. I'm going to cancel this by saying control C. I'm gonna cancel that, that batch. Yes. What we just did is ng serve, and then we had to click on the local host link to open it up. What I want to happen is I want it to just start, just like in Visual Studio when I hit F5, I just want it to start and I want it to open up automatically. So what we can do is we can go to our package.json and remember that little script area? Well, right here where it says start, see that ng serve? We're gonna type dash O, which stands for open. So let's save that, come back to our terminal and we're gonna go npm start because start is the name of the script. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna run ng serve for us with the optional dash O to open it. So it's going to build and then open up our app for us automatically, just like you would experience in Visual Studio. And there you go, there's your Angular app. Now you know how to create an Angular application. You know what most of the files do, and you know how to run it in your browser. It's time. That's right. It's time to announce the winner from last week's video for a one year subscription to Infragistics Ultimate worth nearly $2,000. You ready for this? <laughs> I'm ready for this. I got the winner and I know you want to know right now. You say, Brian, stop talking. Stop dragging it on like they do on TV on the, on the game show where you're going to unmask the singer, right? Okay, here it is. Are you ready? The winner of last week's one year subscription to Infragistics Ultimate is Oliver Story Young, congratulations, you are the winner. I will be contacting you very shortly on how to claim your license to Infragistics Ultimate. If you would like a chance to win a one year subscription to Infragistics Ultimate worth $2,000 while at the same time learning how to take your desktop skills and convert them into web skills, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below, and next week I will announce another winner. See you next time.